We're now joined on the sports mix by the head coach of the Musselman Appleman, Brian Thomas. Coach, it was a loss for your team to John Hanley, but one thing that definitely stands out is your team was able to control the football in terms of uh, time of possession, but um, they, they hit a lot of big plays. So uh, is that kind of the key takeaway that you had was that uh, offensively you feel all right, but definitely need to prevent some big plays? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, th- I think you, you nailed it right there. You know, offensively we played – I think offensively we played well. You know, we had uh, we had over 300 yards of offense. So, you know, we, we, we played well offensively. We did good things. Um, so, you know, pleased with that side of the ball. You know, defensively we didn't play so well. We, we, we didn't do good things. You know, the, the good news behind it is when you go back and watch film, we made a lot of mistakes that were – we're fixable, you know. When you look up a given for when you look at giving up forty points a game, um, you know, in a game, you, you think it's going to be all negatives. But um, actually, when I went back and watched the film, I saw a lot of positive things. Just you know, things that we got to fix. Coach, with with a lot of turnover on the roster uh, this year, uh, who are some names that you, that really stood out to you uh, in that game against John Hanley that you think were, are going to really help you? Uh, build for the rest of the season yeah you know zach miller and nate laser are kind of our one-two punch uh zach does a lot for us you know he threw for he threw for two touchdowns saturday threw for over 100 yards um you know he's also one of our leading ball carriers and nate laser runs the ball really hard for us you know he, he did a really good job those are the guys that kind of you know in a box score and a stat sheet will stand out because you know they'll probably be our two leading carriers but we got a lot of other little pieces that kind of make us run a little bit. Um, Taryn Boyles is a big one. Taryn does a, Taryn does a lot for us. Um, Braylon Horner does a lot for us kind of behind the scenes, um, you know, and setting a lot of things that, that we do. Uh, Sawyer Richardson does a good job for us. Chris Schlack, Trent Shade. So, you know, we got a lot of little pieces behind what we do. We try not to really be a, a one or two man show. We try to be more team oriented. So uh, I, I think a lot of those guys are embracing those roles. Coach, you mentioned it uh, last week. We talked about your team having a not a lot of experience this year, but uh, you said last week that you felt like John Hanley was one of the tougher teams on your schedule. So for you to be able to move the ball against them, uh, what does that say about this group? Yeah, I, uh, you know, a lot of positives. I, I, you know, I, I said that to you last week, and I say, I say it even more after playing them. I think that's one of the best teams that we're going to see all season. Um, you know, I, I think it's definitely one of the – one of the top three teams that we'll play all year. Uh, they're they're a really good football team. Uh, you know, we we got a couple other good teams around our area, but yeah, they're they're you know in our EPAC. But they're John Hanley's a really good football team uh, and do a lot of things well. So yeah, we you know like I said, we did a lot of positive things. But you know when you when you're inexperienced and and you know you're playing your first game of the season and, and um, you know you're playing against a good team, you, you really have to have to play perfect and we you know we weren't even close to that but you know having said that like you mentioned earlier there's a lot of positives that we can take away and build on to follow up on that coach uh you did move the ball but you didn't end up in the end zone as much as you probably would have wanted to Mm -hmm. uh how do you i guess finish off those drives and work on that you can't have i mean we, we two of the drives two of the drives we had long drives and we had penalties that really shot us in the foot i mean you know that's one of, one of the things we talked to the kids about i'd rather i'd rather have a, a zero or a one yard gain than a negative 10 negative 15 yard gain you know so um you know you, you gotta you gotta try to stay positive you gotta not you know you're not gonna always not have penalties we were able to overcome some every once in a while but you know we had two red zone trips uh thrown back because of penalties so you know you can't you can't have that we had a red zone trip that, you know, resulted right before half that we were kind of running hurry up and, and didn't score on resulted in zero points. So, you know, you just can't have, we move the ball well, but at the same time, you got to be able to finish those drives out and not penalize yourself. Obviously over 40 points is what you want to have your defense mm-hmm. uh, put up in a game. What do you think uh, are the biggest uh, areas that you want to see the defense improve on uh, going forward to make sure that, they can uh, make it easier on your offense. 
I mean, de- I, to me, I've always thought defense is a really simple game. You know, we try to make football really hard sometimes, and sometimes it's just, you know, lining up right and, and, and tackling and getting getting to a certain point um, I think is our big key. So I know that sounds basic, but, you know, we got to be able to do basic fundamentals that, like that. You know, I, I think there were times Saturday that we had guys that were trying to almost do too much, like they wanted to make a big play, um, and they, they wanted to uh, – you know, they, they wanted to help us out. And, 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 you know, by doing that, sometimes they actually caught themselves out of position by trying to do too much. So, you know, really just kind of broke down the basics and then, you know, stuff that we're going to work on this week and build on this week. is just, you know, kind of getting back to the basics and understand, you know, what's your job within a certain scheme. Coach Loudon Valley this week, it was a uh, close win for your team last year. What are some things that you've seen from them? They're big. I went and watched their they, – they haven't – they had a bye week last week. So they haven't played a game yet, but I went and watched their second scrimmage against Washington, and they're, they're a big team. Um, you know, they got, they got a lot of size. They're physical up front. Um, you know, they're really well coached. Uh, so, you know, having played against them last year and then having seen them again this year, you know, you, you know that they're going to be a really good football team. So, you know, we're going – you know, also to, to add on to that, we're going there to their place, and they're going to be amped up. They're going to be excited. You know, it's their opener, and it's a home opener. So, you know, they're going to have a lot of energy, and they're going to be ready. So, you know, we, we, with our schedule, with our schedule, things don't ever get any easier. You know, we, we play – if we don't play the toughest schedule in the state, then we're definitely up there um, as one of the toughest. So, you know, we, we, we got we to gotta be ready to go week in and week out. So, you know, they're, they're a good football team. When you go into an environment like that, a team playing its home opener or just a, a game in general where you know there might be a little extra crowd noise coming your way, uh, how do you get your, your team prepared? What do you, what do you kind of tell them uh, as you're getting set for an environment like that? Yeah, we, we, I'll tell you, one of our strengths as a team this year is our mental toughness. We have some really tough kids, uh, really, really tough kids uh physically and mentally that they're just they're they're great kids and we you know we'll talk about that stuff with them we talk about a lot of scenarios and situations uh we talked about Hanley's situation hey we're going into a game it's a saturday afternoon game um you know they're going to have a good crowd there you know we talked a lot about that and, and as far as our kids being ready to play and their mentality we had a really good mentality so you know i'm not saying i don't worry about it because you always worry about that when you're coaching um coaching young men that you know how they're going to respond to a situation but you know i i think our i think our kids will be good i think our kids will be will be fine and ready to go coach what do you think are some of the uh, advantages of your schedule you mentioned it being tough but i guess the fact that you're playing these two uh out-of-state schools to start the season on the road and, and what are some of the i guess advantages of that and, and how they help you prepare for the uh in-state schedule Man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it has too many advantages. You know, it, it's a, it's a gauntlet, man. You know, outside of our, outside of our EPAC conference, we play, you know, two out of state playoff teams. I, I don't think Hanley's going to lose a game this year. I think they're going to go undefeated. Um, it, it, I mean, and, and I don't, I don't say that with disrespect to anybody that's on their schedule. I just, I just think they're really that good. Um, Loudon Valley's a really good team. You know, they, they had a good season last year, made the playoffs. Uh, last year and made a little run and then you know Cabell Midland and Wheeling Park and Parkersburg all teams that are you know teams that make the playoffs in the state of West Virginia and, and have won in, in the playoffs so yeah I don't know if it has any advantages it's a it's a gauntlet man um, but having said that I don't think it you know I don't think our kids I don't think our kids blink I don't think that you know having I mean we just we just played an offensive lineman that uh, is committed to Wake Forest the division one offensive lineman so, you know, they're, they're not going to play against anybody else this year that we're not going to be able to say, say, hey, we, you know, we've seen a kid like that. So, you know, things like that just kind of prepare you for everything that you're going to see. They don't shock you. Coach, obviously you are a teacher towards your, your players and you're, you're there for them to learn uh, many things. Mm-hmm. But you as a coach, uh, I, I would – I think also your learning about yourself, how to how to you know change up your coaching philosophy from time to time. Uh, so far mm-hmm. this season, uh, what do you think is uh, something you've learned for yourself for when it comes to how to coach these kids? Or you know, obviously it might be a little early to, to ha- have all the takeaways from the season that, you, that you're going to have from that perspective. But 
uh, just as a coach, uh, yeah. how how has the season uh, so far been for you yeah. when it comes to a uh, learning experience for yourself? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, man. I I, 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 I respect I respect you asking that. It's a good question. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's it's fun coaching, you know. And I'm a lot different. I've been at Muscleman my entire adult life. I started coaching here uh, when I was 22 years old. I was fresh out of college. I'm, I'm I'm 40 years old now. So I've been here my entire adult life. And you know, luckily, I've been the head coach for 12 years here. And, and you know, I think you grow as a coach over time. I'm I'm a much better coach right now than I was when I was 22. And even when I was first head coach at 28 years old, I, I'm a, I'm a much better coach I think that I am now and I don't think that necessarily has everything to do with X's and O's I think over time you learn you learn when a situation's going on you know how to treat a kid and how to how to care for a kid and and you know I, I, I mean I guess to answer your question me as a coach I don't know I might not always out scheme everybody um, I might not draw up the best plays or anything like that or I might call the wrong thing on on third and two that maybe I shouldn't have called um but you know I, I care about kids as an educator and as a as a coach and as a person and um I do my best I can for the kids to, to make sure that they're learning and they're growing as people um you know because I had a lot of coaches that did that for me in my life so um you know sometimes you know sometimes I think we lose we, we lose focus of that in the world we live in so I'm really learning just you know how, how to help kids out more on a daily basis and how to teach them to grow as a person through the game of football. All right, Coach. We'll uh, wrap it up here with the fun question. Um, yes. The NFL starts this week, so who's your favorite pro team, and do you have a Super Bowl prediction? Ah, uh, man, I, I'm not a big NFL guy. Like, I'm really not a big NFL guy. I really don't watch a lot of NFL because um, usually Sundays I'm working on our stuff from um, – when church is over until usually at, at midnight at night, I'm, I, don't, I don't watch a lot of NFL. When I do root, I root for the Ravens, um, but I'm not one of those people that I hang by the TV and I'm, 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 that ruins my whole week if they lose. Uh, man, Super Bowl prediction, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I honestly I honestly don't know an answer to that. Um, uh, you put me on the spot. Who was in it last year? It was it was Chiefs, 49ers. Chiefs and Forty Niners. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if how. I, I want to are, say the Forty Niners. We'll go. Let's go. Let's go on a limb. Let's go. I'll give you a quick one. Bengals because I'm a Joe Burrow fan, and <laughs> uh, I'm I'm going on a real limb here, and I don't even like this team. I'm just going to go Cowboys. Bengals. Cowboys. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Bengals, I like the Cowboys prediction. Dak Prescott. Sorry, are you more of a college football guy than than NFL? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about a national yeah. championship pick then? Man, college football. It, 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 <laughs> college football is hard with the transfer portal and the NIL. The richer, the rich just get richer. I mean, it's going to be Georgia every year until somebody beats them because they just, you know, they overhaul with transfers and NIL money and they get rich. So, I mean, it, it's um, my sleeper is Notre Dame. The I like Notre Dame. All right, there we go. All right, thank you, Coach Thomas, and uh, good luck this week against Loud Valley. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all you do.